Tax Act has added some additional features for you to file your 2020 tax return. It can sync up with different financial institutions and you can import your 1099 and W-2 forms directly into the software. You can even get options for advice from tax experts. However, Tax Act is still pretty clunky to use. With its high prices, I'm going to do a complete review and walkthrough of why you should avoid Tax Act this year. Hey guys, it's Justine with the College Investor Investing and Personal Finance for Millennials. Today we are going over the Tax Act tax software so you can file your 2020 tax return. And I have to say, this one is just a software you'll want to avoid. But first, you might have the question, is Tax Act free? Yes, it is. So for W-2 income earners, if you want to file your federal and state return for free, you can do so. If you also have an earned income credit that you want to recover through your tax return, or if you want to use the recovery rebate credit, if you never received your stimulus check, you can do so and file your return 100% free using Tax Act. However, if you have a health savings account, student loan interest that you want to deduct, or other investments that you need to report, you'll have to upgrade to a paid plan using Tax Act. So what's new in 2021 for Tax Act? Well, the first thing is, this is a big time saver feature. You can actually import your W-2 and 1099s directly into the software, and then they're going to take that import and fill out the necessary forms for you. That's a big time saver when it comes to any type of tax software that you're looking for. Another feature that they're rolling out for this year is they have an expert help feature. So you can make an appointment with a CPA, an enrolled agent, or other tax attorneys and get your tax questions answered. Now, this is a paid feature through Tax Act. However, you are interacting with a live person, so we can justify a price for this type of plan and this type of feature. All right, so let's talk about pricing next. Tax Act is actually very similarly priced to H&R Block, but the programs are just very, very different. So let's hop into the pricing plans for Tax Act. Okay, so once you're on Tax Act's pricing plans, the first thing is if you are a Rakuten user, you can get 7.5% cash back if you end up doing one of their paid plans. So that's just an additional cash back that you can get using their program. However, one thing that really was kind of a bummer that I found out is that under the deluxe edition, it's $24.95 plus $44.95 per state filing return. And if you end up having to do the deluxe edition, if you had unemployment income in 2020, which a lot of people may fall in this category, you actually have to pay for the deluxe plan. I really feel like that should be under a free plan. But under the free plan, if you're a W-2 earner, you want that child tax or earned income credit, stimulus credit, you can do so using the free version. If you have investments, rental property, foreign bank accounts, you will be bumped up to the premier plan, which is $34.95. And then those of you who are self-employed, sole proprietorships, will spend the most at $64.95 plus that $44.95 per state filing. Now, these prices are very similar. In fact, the deluxe plan is more expensive than the plan that H&R Block was providing. And H&R Block just has way more intuitive user experience. Their software is a lot easier to use. So take it for what you will. Tax Act is uh, pricing this similar to H&R Block, but they couldn't be more opposite. Okay, now that we know what type of pricing Tax Act is providing this year, let's go ahead and jump into the software and I'll walk you through some of the features of Tax Act. 
This is a look at inside of TaxAx tax software, and you're going to create an account and get your info created. Make sure that you have your name, address, all of that fun stuff input directly into the dashboard, and then start your return with the get started green button. Now their look and feel is a lot better than tax software like olt.com, that's for sure. Have these nice big buttons to help you get prepared for your tax situation. So we're going to be a W-2 employee. If you had any student loans and student loan interest that you wanted to deduct, then you would have to upgrade to the deluxe edition. But I'm going to unhighlight that and just stick with the free plan for now. So let's go ahead and start our free filing. So it looks like you can transfer last year's return into the tax software, which could help speed up processes. There's also this help center menu on the right hand side. And then you're going to see a left hand uh, navigation for your basic information, federal state return. So this setup is pretty similar to what you're going to see on other platforms. But as we get into this, you're gonna see that it's just a little clunky on how we do things. All right, so once you put in your personal information, you're going to see all of that stuff. Looks good. And then you're going to start going through the personal information prompts, make sure that everything's up to date and correct. Okay, so now once you get your basic information filled in, you're gonna start in on your federal return. Up at the top of your screen, you're going to see an update of your federal refund and then your state refund when you're ready to do that afterwards. And then you're gonna go through the income deductions, credits, taxes, miscellaneous, and then to your summary page. And so far, this is pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, it looks like you can hit this little I button and then it's going to show you a pop-up screen. All right, so you're going to have to manually input your W-2 here. And so look at that form and then plug in what you see. This can be a little bit time consuming. You'd much rather want to Import those forms if you can. Otherwise, just go ahead and plug in the information as you see it. Okay, once you get your W-2 information inputted, then it looks like you can automatically import your 1099 documents. And it looks like they've only partnered with just a handful although it does say and more, and it looks like you can do an electronic import from those financial institutions. Although, <laughs> if you want to do this early, it looks like you won't be able to do so until the feature is made available at a later date. So if you're trying to file early, you may have to wait until after January to see this feature active. Okay, so once we got to the deductions page, this is a little confusing because it says start on itemized deductions, but it says you are eligible for the standard deduction. So you can take the standard deduction now or go through the itemized list. And I don't like how Tax Act is making me figure out which is the right choice for me. If you are new to filing your taxes, you would probably want that recommended from your tax software, especially if you end up paying for that software. So we're gonna take the standard deduction. It looks like from that green button that you have to go through the itemized deductions and you don't. I do like how they have these purple pro tip boxes that call out exactly what we need to look at. So for the stimulus payment, the IRS is calling it the recovery rebate credit. So at least they are giving you the definition and letting you know exactly what this part means. So most people are going to say yes and enter in how much you received. 
And then Tax Act has reflected its software with the latest tax law changes. So if you purchase health insurance through the marketplace, then you can input this the information in order to calculate your tax credit. If you did not receive a 1095A, then you can skip this. Okay, so then we're going to get to the federal summary. It looks like I owe $168. Okay, then you get to this nice summary page, and while it is all put together in a nice summary, for paying a premium price if you don't get into that free filing situation, it's just a little over overpriced for what you get. This feels like a bargain software, but you're paying premium prices. Then after you go through your federal return, you can go through your state return. And then once your state is ready to accept e-filers, then you can go back in and submit for a complete review and then file your return. Now here's that expert help feature that I was mentioning before that if you want to get one-on-one -on -one help, that you can add this on. It looks like it's not available until mid-January, but this is going to be a paid feature. So I feel like even if you did have questions, you could just have that reassurance from a tax expert through Tax Act to help you make sure that you are filing your taxes correctly. All in all, this was a so-so tax software experience. I find that there are are better ones out there, especially if you're going to be paying for your tax software. But this is a, a quick little walkthrough of the 2020 tax software for Tax Act. So Tax Act positions itself as a premium tax software. However, its features really fall within the bargain software category. And if that's the case, you're wanting to look for something that has better pricing, you're better off looking at something like Tax Slayer or Tax Hawk. If you are okay paying these types of prices for online tax software, then I would highly suggest you look at H&R Block. Tax Act is just way too clunky for a high price, and for that reason, we suggest looking elsewhere. Now, don't forget, we cover a complete series of tax software reviews on the website, so before you make a decision on where to file your taxes online, be sure to check out all our thorough reviews at thecollegeinvestor.com.